Hi there, my name is Toya C and I'd like to welcome you back to my channel, Do It In God. If this is your first time swinging by this side of the YouTube space, welcome aboard. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button below and do not forget to hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I do post more videos on Christian content and also navigating through being a Christian into this world. All right, so today's video is a part two to my last video. If you've not watched the first part, I urge you to go back and watch it. It just came up on your screen. Go ahead and watch it. Um, and pretty much it's the lessons that I learned while putting together my daughter's basketball hoop, okay, which I did yesterday, but I'm not sure when you guys are going to be watching this video, but I did it yesterday as when I was recording this video. In the first video, I had shared on what the dangers of procrastinations were and why we cannot afford to procrastinate. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys on the dangers of self-dependency. Woo! This one is juicy. Let's go! This was the, actually the meat of what I, you know, learned yesterday that, you know, God really dealt with me on this one. Um, being that I'm an avid DIYer, so those that have been following this channel for a long time know that I used to post lots of DIY videos on this channel, which I'm going to be transitioning over to my second YouTube space, which is going to be called Sweet Home of Chanel. Be on the lookout for that. But being the DIYer that I am, I love to assemble things. I love to be creative. And sometimes I just... I can look at a certain thing. I do thank God for the gift. I can look at a certain thing. And without even reading the manual, I know how to put it together and I just get to work. My husband is always like, oh my God, here she goes. <laughs> Sometimes I even do it without even asking him, you know, you know how most, most of the time in regards to traditional roles, right? We tend to want to have the husband do most of these things. Well, in my home, that is one thing that I get done. I roll my sleeves up, I get my tools and I get to work. So on this particular day, I got to work, you know, which is my typical in my typical DIY fashion and <clears throat> pop the box open that, you know, yeah, I, I kind of skimmed through the manual, just looked at it at face value. You know, it was pretty, pretty straight to the point. I think about eight, nine steps. Cause it was a very pretty easy install 10 minutes and I was done. Bam, bam, boom. And you know, they also drew pictures in there. So I kind of had an idea what to do. Bam, bam, bam. Everything is going well. And then I got to the last step. Yeah. The easiest part, literally the, Hoop is already set up. All I had to do was install the net. The easiest part of the install was what gave me a challenge. Y'all, I cannot make this up. I probably did the first seven steps in like two minutes. And then I spent eight minutes on installing the net. Huh? Somebody explain how something so simple and just putting the net, hooking the net onto the hoop itself now became a problem. I tried everything that I thought in looking at the little holes around the, the hoop. I was just so sure that I knew what I was doing. There was no way anyone was going to tell me that what I was trying to implement and execute was not the right fit. But then I also had a lot to do that day. And so I realized I cannot spend forever here trying to figure this thing out on my own. And I looked at the manual. The manual was just a picture. It wasn't that clear. So I went a step further to go to the website of the YouTube um, page of Little Tykes, which is the brand um, for this basketball hoop that, that produced and manufactured the basketball hoop. And in less than 20 seconds, literally, boom, my answer was then I realized what I was doing wrong. I was not looping the net into the hole before hooking it onto the hook. I just went straight to hooking on because I just assumed, what you do? Just put the hook, right? Or put the net on the hook and it should hook. Like I'm Captain Hook. Anyways. <laughs> And I realized to that moment how dumb and how, well, not necessarily dumb because I'm not dumb. You know, thank God. God has given every single one of us an ounce of wisdom and a sound mind. I reject that. I'm not dumb. It's power in the tongue. But in that moment, I realized, I realized how self-dependent I was and how much or how foolish my self-dependency made me in that very moment in time, right? It was folly to assume that I knew it all. And I did not need to refer to the manufacturer of the product. And I also underestimated the net because it was the easiest part, or at least that's what I thought, right? I assumed I had it figured out. I underestimated the net and it cost me. It cost me time. It cost me effort. It cost me, you know, even my peace of mind because I was literally raking my mind trying to figure it out. And rather than there, I just felt it within me. The Holy Spirit just asked me, so what have you learned from this experience? And I was like, oh, there we go again. <laughs> I'm always learning something from the Holy Spirit in the most random places. 
And this happened to me when I was, you know, installing a basketball hoop. And at that moment, I realized that what I learned was it's very dangerous to be dependent on myself or what I think I know. Granted, it's good that we're reading books. It's good to be knowledgeable in things. You know, we can't just simply say because we have the Holy Spirit in us, we should engage the Holy Spirit and not even like, you know, renew our minds, not even put our minds to work. No, we have to constantly exercise our minds. But even as we are exercising our minds, we are also supposed to surrender it, still surrender it back to the Holy Spirit and still use it back for wisdom and guidance and everything that we do, right? We're supposed to read the word. Even, even in this case, just, just as I skim through the manual, right? I, I also could have taken it a step further to go back to the manufacturer's website and read it more and watch the video in more detail to get clarity on how to install the net. As believers, sometimes what we also do with the word is we skim through the word. We don't take the moment to digest it. We don't take the moment to even go back and seek God and say, well, this particular scripture that I'm reading here, Lord, you know, teach me more. Tell me more. Show me more. Right. We become self-dependent on what we see at face value in the scripture or in the word just by us skimming through it, which is a very dangerous place to be sometimes because head knowledge and heart knowledge are two different things. Head knowledge in correlation to the frequency of what the Holy Spirit is doing in a particular season and time can contradict each other. Most of the times, nine times out of 10, it will because his ways are not our ways, right? We are in this world, but we are not meant to operate like we are of this world. We are supposed to be connected to the frequency of heaven and always keep that in the back of our minds and everything that we do. Even the day-to-day -day stuff that may seem like it's effortless or doesn't require any effort on our part or, or any help from heaven. And you would think I would have known this because my favorite scripture is from the book of Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. that says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not onto your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Some version of that scripture says he will make every career path straight. He will make your path straight. And even I failed. Okay. So again, as I was saying on my videos, this is not to make anybody feel bad or bash anybody down because these are my day to day experiences that I'm sharing with you. And this is to let you know that you are not alone. If you have done this, if you're guilty of this, I'm guilty too. We all are. That's why we are human. But the beautiful thing is that we are conscious of it. And when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, we, we yield ourselves and we listen and we try to reorder our steps, right? Um, and so, yes, we can't afford to lean on our understanding in all our ways, not some ways in all our ways. We acknowledge the, the sovereignty of God, the uncomprehendable wisdom that God has, and he would direct us. He would show us what to do. He would order our steps. That's what that scripture says. And so the moral of today's story, as I wrote in my notebook, is even when we say yes to what God has called us to do, which I finally did the work and put the basketball hoop together, we must always learn to lean on him while in the process. Don't navigate things outside of God. So even when you begin to now say you've gotten out of the uh, the funk of procrastination, as I mentioned in the first video, and you begin to go and you're getting things done. Let's try to be conscious um, of the dangers of self-dependency, of the self-running machine, right? Let's try to still make sure that we are in alignment with God. This is my year of divine alignment. I think I mentioned that in my first video of the year is my year where I'm trying to make sure that everything I do is aligned with what heaven is trying to do in this season. I don't want to be out of that. I want to make sure I stay on that frequency, even if it may sound crazy or it may not necessarily be in alignment with what everyone is doing in the world. But anyway, we want to be sure to align ourselves to God and still engage God, right? For me, for example, whenever I'm creating stuff for the time shop, I'm telling you, like I get flashes sometimes. I could be in my bed just minding my business and I get a flash of an inspiration on the design. And I pause as much as that my mind as a creative is running 25 million miles an hour. And I want to get straight to my software and begin to design and sketch those designs and find a way to produce that. I'm learning to pause and say, okay, God, is this you? Or is this just Toyota's mind running? And even if it's not you, what you think about it, Jesus? <laughs> like literally I, I collaborate with God, even though my creations for the time shop, like this right here, I stay grubbing. This is one of my old, um, creations from last year from the time shop. And it was one of my best sellers as well, too. And when I got this um, inspiration, you know, initially my a part of me was like, uh, that's too hood. That's too ratchet. No one's really going to want to, you know, 
wear that and that's not what most folks will gravitate towards especially when it comes to your audience the audience that i studied or who i felt like you know the time shop was going to serve my main audience and i pray about it also shared it with my husband he was like no go and i felt the peace of god leading me to go when i released this and added it to the um live the word collection that i launched last year so in essence what am i saying to you Be sure to collaborate with God. Be sure to collaborate with heaven and engage heaven in everything that you're doing. There's so much danger in self-dependency because what can happen when you do that is you can make mistakes that you can't come back from. Thankfully, in my case, I was able to come back from my mistake of trying to fix it myself. We can also find ourselves in a situation where we become frustrated even while operating within our purpose. Ooh! When we become dependent on ourselves, while walking in purpose we can find ourselves frustrated while walking in purpose because we've chosen we have chosen to take out the person who gives a purpose to us that's very key i don't know if anybody else has experienced this i'm not gonna lie i have it's not like i stopped doing the work but subconsciously i got comfortable in my self-running machine and i literally got frustrated even though i was still in alignment to doing the work but i wasn't in alignment with the person that did the calling for the work Boom. That's a very big one. And beyond even just being frustrated in the calling, we also, you know, can find ourselves in a situation where we might actually even end up just letting go of the gift or letting go of the calling. When I was trying to install that net yesterday, I almost got to a point where I almost said, you know what? Boom. Bye. (laughs) Okay. I was going to drop that net and just say, bye. I don't get this. I'm done. And that's what the enemy wants us to do. When he begins to, you know, push us and nudge us to attempt us to be self-dependent on ourselves the ultimate goal is to get us to the place where we now feel like you know what we're not good enough and we're not cutting it and so instead of running back to god and trying to reorder our steps and fix things we give in and we give up and walk away right and that is not god's desire for us no matter how far off we've gone he's always available to receive us when we come back um but yeah that's the message for today I hope this video has blessed you guys. <laughs> like I always tell you guys, I mean, I have all the answers. I mean, I know it all, but I am glad. I know the one does, and that's Christ Jesus, and you can know him too. If this video has blessed your soul or inspired you in one way or another, please, please help a sister out. I'm rusty and trying to get back into the groove of things. I need more exposure on the YouTube space just to at least get people, that, the right folks that you know are, are meant to be a part of this tribe, to be aware that we're back in the flow of things and also to get more new folks to be on the side of the world with us, right? So please do like that button, hit that like button and hit the subscribe notification buttons as well if you've not subscribed to this channel. Do not forget to also comment below. Let me know how this video has blessed you. What about what about what this video stuck out to you the most? What is the critical thing that I mentioned today that impacted you in a certain way and how, and you can even, if you feel free and feel led to share, you can even share with me how that, you know, even applies to where you currently are in your faith journey. Please do share below and of course share with a friend that is not even subscribed to this channel. Post it on your YouTube, on your Instagram, your social media pages, whatever. Please just help us grow um, because I need all the encouragement. I'm not going to lie. I need to continue to be encouraged and as I see results and I say that it's bearing fruits, of course, it's going to encourage me to keep going. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Thank you for tuning into this channel today and until next time, bless you and love. Bye-bye.